Welcome to Tech in the Car. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. What are the differences? Why are they different? What can you do with them? What doesn't work with them? What does work with them? And also, how do they display on this, the beautiful Genesis GV70, which has got a massive widescreen display, which is a really great opportunity to show some of the differences between Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So what is Apple CarPlay? What is Android Auto? Well, it's very simple. Most people nowadays have either an Android phone or an iPhone. And instead of having to connect via Bluetooth to send your music and your media and your contacts and your phone calls, Google and Apple both thought it would be much easier to connect the phone at the time via USB cable to the car and to project, to send essentially certain things on your phone screen to the car infotainment screen. In this case, stuff like maps, stuff like your music, and obviously stuff like phone calls. They came up with that and they are both very different when they started. They've both been adding features and taking away features which we're gonna talk about in this video, but that is essentially what they do. So there's no need to use Bluetooth to connect your phone up. You just literally plug your phone in, or if you're lucky enough to have a wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay system, it will automatically connect via Wi-Fi inside your car and project the maps onto your car. This system is far, far better than every map system on every car manufacturer, with the exception of one, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. It's much, much easier for you to put either Apple Maps or Google Maps on the screen and know exactly where you are. And then any details, contacts, any appointments in the calendar, they will automatically, or they should automatically, appear on your screen as well, which is another cool feature of these. And because it's connected to the internet and it's Google and Apple, it is always being updated and adding features. So although newest cars that come out do have software updates nowadays and they have map updates, they don't compare in terms of map updates that Google put on Google Maps and Apple have been doing into Apple Maps or Waze or one of the other various map applications you can use. So there are some big differences there. And let's start off with Android Auto. When Android Auto launched, it looked totally different to how it does now. When it officially launched the first time, it showed a vertical display down the middle of your screen and it would automatically put in calendar appointments and anything else, reminders, and it would show it to you on the screen, like a home screen, which is giving you an overview of your day's events. It meant that if you had a meeting scheduled for that day and you'd saved it into your phone, or even if you'd searched for it in Google Maps, it would automatically show off on the screen. All you have to do is tap the little navigate button and it would appear. It was a really, really easy way of doing things. And in actual fact, I really miss it from the current way Google do things. When Apple CarPlay launched, and it always has stayed this way, it was essentially a replication of your home screen with massive icons for your apps. Now, Apple a few years ago decided to slightly change it up and they added a home screen where if you scroll to the right, to the left side of your apps, you would then get a overview which showed your maps, and your music and your media status. So they added a bit of a home screen that you could go between the two and see what was going on in one place. So you didn't have to keep going between the two. I've covered a lot of cars on the channel and maybe you want to get the latest new car. Well, I've partnered with exchangemycar.com to give everybody who watches my channel a great deal. With exchangemycar.com, you can sell your car or you can party exchange it. If you sell your car, they'll come to your home and collect the car. The price you're given will be what you get as long as you describe your car accurately and they'll pay for your car by electronic transfer before they drive away. And if you want to pot exchange your car, they will sort it all out for you, clear the finance, and you can choose from over 80,000 cars from trusted dealers. ExchangeMyCar.com is the smart way to sell your car. Click the link below and you can check out what you can get for your car. Google then changed the way it looked to look like this, where you have a map overview when you open and then you can tap on the home button and you can see your various apps. And that was basically how Google decided to do things. And then at the bottom of the screen, you've got your voice icon, so you can tap on it, or you can just hold the button on the steering wheel to use Google. And I'm gonna demonstrate the Assistant versus Siri in a little bit. And then you have your notifications icon at the bottom, which will show you if there are any notifications. No notifications right now. And then you've got your widget for your media. And what's great about this is it lets you go between your music and then your maps will show up at the bottom here and then you can tap to go back to your maps. So if you were to go somewhere, you'd then show at the bottom of the screen. So then I can swap between my maps and my music like that. I'll use a little scroll wheel at the bottom if your screen is far away. So that is what Android Auto let you do. And then I could go between various different apps as well. 
and then at the top of the screen you would have your signal your wi-fi connection if you connect to the wi-fi the weather and the time now on certain car manufacturers the way android auto displays is different on this car on the genesis gv70 you'll see here that we have a space where it says android auto and it says my phone and there's nothing else there and then at the side of the screen here we have widgets that you can scroll through on this genesis system now android auto does support widescreen and different screen ratios but unfortunately most car manufacturers do not support it themselves there are some exceptions to that bmw and mercedes with their latest infotainment systems do support different ratio android auto and apple carplay and we're talking here about widescreen different ratio android auto for whatever reason apple carplay seems to be supported in widescreen mode on every car manufacturer no issues at all on bmws it looks different to mercedes which also looks different than on a mustang mach -E, which i've also done a video on recently which has a different display as well so there are differences with what android auto can show on the different wider screen displays which support it on android auto you'll get your widgets down the side of the screen and still get the full maps which looks a bit more like maybe what carplay is doing now there is an update to android auto coming soon which will actually change the home screen or add a home screen to look more like android auto used to and look basically like carplay does now and now that's not out yet maybe if you're watching this video a few months down the line or a year down the line you'll see that now one of the negatives of this is generally speaking you cannot see your directions from android auto apple carplay in the center of your digital dials now again there are some exceptions the newest cars are actually starting to show up turn by turn directions so just a little arrow so they won't show you the full map but they will show you an arrow telling you to turn left or turn right and the latest versions from bmw the new iDrive system actually will display android autos maps in the middle of the dashboard which is a fantastic advancement that's something that was really missing one disadvantage of android auto however is when driving you do have to limit the number of times you can interact with the screen after a certain number of taps it will stop you interacting with android auto and google says this is for safety reasons to meet car safety laws in the countries where android auto is available this is a bit strange because CarPlay does not have the same limitation. You can interact with the screen, tap the screen as many times as you want. And in fact, I would argue it's actually counterproductive in terms of safety because what you find yourself doing is either unplugging your phone from Android Auto to tap through manually on the phone or sitting here frustrated that it's making you wait 10 seconds before you then start tapping on the screen twice as annoyed and then probably get another safety warning. You can, of course, use your voice, but sometimes you just want to tap the screen. So I wish Google would remove that restriction from Android Auto. This is what Apple CarPlay looks on the Genesis GV70. Now you can see immediately it's full widescreen and it looks very different from Android Auto. It, as I said, it's a replication of what you can see on your phone. If we slide to the side, you get a widget overview which will show your maps and the internet is a bit dodgy where I am. So that's why it isn't fully giving you that satellite view but you can see clearly what's going on here. You've got your media and you've got your navigation options. And then you've got your quick buttons down the side where you can swap between your most recent apps. And then you've got a button here to go back to your apps. And then we've got this button here to go back to your home screen as such. So that is what CarPlay looks like. And again, we can swipe to the side and we can see all the apps. It looks exactly the same. Let's do a comparison now between Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with the voice system. So I'm gonna give you some examples with Google. Hey Google. Where is the nearest Starbucks? Showing results for where is the nearest Starbucks. Hey Siri, where is the nearest Starbucks? Here's what I found. So this is using Apple Maps, not Google Maps. Hey Siri, hey Google. What is the weather in Malibu? Right now in Malibu, it's 17 degrees and sunny. Today, it will be partly cloudy with a forecast high of 19 and a low of 14. What's the weather in Malibu? It's currently clear and 17 degrees in Malibu, California, the United States. Expect mostly clear skies starting in the morning. Today's high will be 22 degrees and the low will be 15. My weather data is provided by the Weather Channel. Hey Google. What is Malibu made from? 
On the website vinepair.com, they say, Malibu is distilled from molasses, a sugarcane refinement byproduct. It's plenty of cool stuff to know about rum production. The key here is knowing that rum can be made from either sugarcane juice or molasses syrup, the latter a byproduct of sugarcane refinement and sugar production. Hey Siri. What is Malibu made out of? Here's what I found from wikipedia.org. Malibu is a coconut flavored liqueur made with Caribbean rum and possessing an alcohol content by volume of 21.0%, 42 proof. Hey Google. Give me directions to Paris. Paris is five hours, 34 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. Hey Siri. Give me directions to Paris. Sorry, I can't provide directions for places in Namibia. Hey Siri, give me directions to Paris. Okay, here's Paris, France. Hey Google, what is 577 multiplied by 56 divided by 4? The answer is 8,078. Hey Siri, what is 577 multiplied by 56 divided by 4? 587 times 56 divided by 4 is 8,218. Hey Siri, what is 577 multiplied by 56 divided by 4? 507 times 56 divided by 4 is 7,098. Hey Siri, what is 577 multiplied by 56 divided by 4? Sorry, I can't show you the result while you're in the car. So, I mean, you can hear there, I asked it three times and it still is not giving me the right answer, which is a bit disappointing. Hey Google, who is the president of France? The president of France is Emmanuel Macron. Hey Siri, who is the President of France? Emmanuel Macron is the President of the French Republic. Hey Google. How do you say I love driving in Italian? In Italian, that's... Amo guidare. Hey Siri, how do you say I love driving in Italian? In Italian, love driving is... Amo guidare. Hey Google. Play Hang On by Need to Breathe on Spotify. Hang On by Need to Breathe, sure. Playing on Spotify. So you can see that works straight away on here without any issues whatsoever. And I can scroll through the search results as well to go between the live and the non-live versions. Hey Siri, play Hang On by Need to Breathe on Spotify. I'll need to access your Spotify data. Now playing Need to Breathe on Spotify. I turned off the music there because obviously we can't have music playing on YouTube because I'll get copyright notifications. But you can see that Siri working with Spotify. Hey Google. Set a reminder for tomorrow at 2 p.m. to check Android Auto out. All right, I'll remind you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Hey Siri, remind me at 2 o'clock tomorrow to check CarPlay out. Okay, your reminder is set for tomorrow. So you can see that Siri struggles with voice recognition, even though obviously Apple sell it as a massive feature of the iPhone and a benefit of using Apple CarPlay. It's not as good as the Google Assistant. Google does have an advantage, so that's to be expected. But that's one of the reasons why, despite having an iPhone and an Android phone, I would rather use Android Auto. One other disadvantage of CarPlay is I cannot go into Google Maps using Siri. I have to go into Google Maps, as I'll demonstrate here. And then after I'm in Google Maps, I then have to use the voice controls in Google Maps by tapping the search button and then tapping the voice button. Where is the nearest Starbucks? 
Where is the nearest Starbucks? Where is the nearest Starbucks? Where is the nearest Starbucks? So again, because it's not natively incorporated into CarPlay, using Google's voice functionality doesn't work as well. So another disadvantage in my opinion that CarPlay has. But anyway, that is CarPlay and that is Android Auto compared. Now, let's do something else. Let's talk about what's coming and another alternative infotainment system. So the latest cars from Volvo, Polestar, General Motors in America, and other manufacturers to come run on something called Android Automotive. Now, Android Automotive is Android built into the car infotainment system. It means a whole system is running on Android. It means that Google Maps, your music and everything is the full Android apps. It means a Google Assistant is built into the car. It means that you have everything you can want, including the maps in front of you on the digital driver's display without having to connect your phone. Now, the disadvantage of that is if you have an iPhone, CarPlay is not as yet available on any infotainment system that runs Android Automotive yet. The same thing actually with Android Auto. Some people like to have Android Auto on top of Android Automotive. I don't really know the point of that, but again not available car manufacturers such as volvo and Polestar have said it is coming and i'm sure that is the case too if you look at the latest cars from gm in america such as the hummer ev that also runs on android automotive and there is an icon for android auto and an icon for carplay on there so there are ways to put them onto your car if you want to use them however i would say if you have an android phone you don't really need android automotive because google will sign you in to your account and everything will already be pre-populated there so there isn't really a benefit to do that however the disadvantage is right now if you use android automotive you do have to use bluetooth to connect your phone to your car and that is the only way to get those phone calls onto your car and that is a disadvantage it works obviously fine but it doesn't take advantage of the capability that you get in android auto and apple carplay so to summarize Android Auto and Apple CarPlay allow you to send information, your music, your phone calls, your contacts, your messages from your phone to the car by plugging them in or in some cases wirelessly using wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay. Different cars support different kinds of CarPlay and Android Auto. They may or may not have wireless connections. They might require you to plug it in with USB. They may or may not have widescreen or different aspect ratio versions of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but fundamentally the functionality is the same. You can put your phone onto your car. Google Assistant has a better voice system than Siri, which means you'll be able to access your phone calls and everything better. But obviously, if you have an iPhone, then you don't have much choice in the matter. You will obviously learn what Siri is good at and what it's not good at, and it will improve as it has improved over time. Just like Apple Maps doesn't have as much information as Google Maps all over the world, but it is coming as Apple update maps as well. So that is the overview. My preference, Android Auto, because it works better with voice when driving. You don't want to be repeating yourself. Hope you enjoyed this guide to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is a Genesis GV70, as I said, and watch my full review on this car. Please give this video a like, subscribe for more on the channel. And if you have any questions on Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching.